Hi, I'm Beth from Restyle Pieces Boutique. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be working on a TV stand. It's like an 80s oakish TV stand, kind of plain, kind of ugly really. There's some water damage on the top and I'm going to see if I can get that out. There's little bubbles. I don't know if it's going to work or not, but we will see together. So if you want to see this makeover, stay tuned. Yes, I do hate those spider eggs underneath my furniture, so I am going to get started right away. I'm going to be vacuuming out this piece and then cleaning it with my uh, Pure Power from Farmhouse Paint and then rinsing with water. So here I go. Oh, you have to turn the nozzle to get it to work. Doi. And this is what I mean when I say rinse, I just spray it with water and wipe it down. I don't use my hose on that or anything. So I'm removing this weird little piece that was stapled on there. I'm not really sure what the function of it was. The doors open and close fine without it, but I had to get all these staples out and man, they were in there good. So I use a screwdriver, my multi-tool, and my hammer to actually pry all those out. Then I'm sanding down the top to bare wood to get rid of those spots. Do you see those white spots showing up? That is water damage and they were bubbled up some. So let's see if I can get them all straightened out. So I started with 120 grit and then now I'm on my final grit with a, and I also in between grits, um, I dusted it off and cleaned it off so that I didn't mess up my gum up my sun, sandpaper and mess up my finish. I'm sanding it down with a 180 right now. I believe I may have finished with a 220. So now I'm just scuff sanding the rest of the piece uh, with a 150 to get out all the imperfections and to scuff up my surface so that it will accept paint. I'm using the flat paper with my surf prep sander right now and then I switched to the foam abrasives when I went to those little um, curvy places. Now I'm using quick wood epoxy putty and I'm working it in with my hands to mix up the two parts and then I'm just placing that into these little gashed areas on the front of the piece. This putty dries very hard. It can be molded into a imperfection and then it's sanded easily. Now I'm using my DAP Premium Wood Filler to just fill those smaller dents and dings. I wanted to cover up that open space in the back, so I cut this little piece of backing and then I'm just sanding it off so I can get it ready for primer and paint as well. The piece fit perfectly up and down, but uh, I needed to cut off the edge, so I used this triangular square to mark where it needed to be cut and then my husband will come out because we always use the sander in pairs <laughs> and we will cut that piece off. Mm -hmm. 
This Ryobi table saw was very budget friendly and it has been such a great addition to my shop. After checking again, it was a little bit too high, so we just shaved off the edge. I did get the top of the piece sanded off very smoothly and nicely. It's all perfect. And now I've decided to do a wash. So I did one part cathedral taupe by Fusion and then four parts of water and I'm going to take some blue shop towels, fold them up to wipe it off. I'm applying it all over my piece and wiping it off. Don't worry about those drips. That part's gonna be painted and I'll just wipe that clean. The reason I'm doing this paint wash is to remove some of those orange tones. It evens up the tone of the wood, gets rid of those orange casts in the wood, and then whatever you want to do to it next, leave it that way or stain it will become much easier. actually really love it like it is so I think I'll just end up top coating the top. Here I'm scuff sanding the rest of the piece and I'm sanding off all of those little pieces that I filled with my wood filler and my quick wood epoxy putty. So you can see I have my piece on top of this uh, hydraulic lift table cart that has been a godsend for my back. You can make it go up and down, higher, lower, and I just love it. So it comes from Harbor Freight, and I'll have the link in my description along with all of the other products that I've used on this flip. Here I'm using Wood Pate by Farmhouse Paint. I love this, it's light in color. It's like a pudding consistency. It is so smooth and creamy, and I just thought it was the perfect filler for for these tiny holes. It is time. I'm using my scotch tape with plastic and my frog tape to tape up this area behind the doors that I do not want to get spray dust on it because I am spray painting this. And it's all about the details. So I cut these little pieces of frog tape and I covered up my magnets and my inside of my hinges so that they would not be covered with white paint as well. Just as an extra precaution, I tape up this little back 
board because I don't want spray dust on there. And I'm just a little particular about that. <laughs> um, sometimes you can spray it and it'll be okay, but there's still this like this fine little dust. So I like to cover it up. Here I'm using a 400 grit sanding sponge that I got from Lowe's. I love this little sanding sponge. It just makes it the top so smooth and perfect. And they don't put the grit on it. So of course I wrote it on there with my permanent marker. Here I'm using my delicate scotch uh, painter's tape to go around the edges. I don't want to damage the paint wash that I put on the top. So I don't want just regular green frog tape and then pull it off and I pull off some of that paint wash. So I'm using the delicate around the edges and then I'm putting the plastic around the top so that when I spray paint, that's all covered and will be protected. So now I am using my Insulex Aqualock white primer. I have this in white and black. I had a lot of the white. It is water-based and it works really well. It's a really good primer. However, in this case, it didn't work as well as I wanted it to. So I will show you why in just a little bit. I do strain my primer to get rid of all those little particles in there and I add a little bit of water so it will go through my sprayer and then I'm ready to go. Also, since I am painting this white, I really wanted a white primer to save me coats on, of paint. And here you can see me setting up my Wagner Flexio 5000, putting on my respirator and my goggles and getting started. Always test out and adjust your spray pattern on a piece of cardboard or paper or something so that you know when you're ready to hit that piece, you have a good, thin, wet, smooth coat of paint or primer in this case. This has been real time, but here in a moment, I'll speed it up so we don't have to waste any time. So here's the problem. I have bleed through that. This is the problem that I was talking about earlier. I have bleed through. It's that brown, light brown or light pinkish uh, color that seeps through when the tannins of the wood seep through your primer. Didn't get sealed as well as I wanted it to. So I scuffed sanded it very gently with a high grade, wiped that clean, and then I reprimed it with Kills Restoration. It's also a water-based primer and it came out perfectly. It's a light gray color, 
but I am so happy with how it turned out. This is one of my primers I use quite a bit. So here you can see, again, I'm just gently set, scuff sanding it with a high grade sandpaper and wiping it down. And now I get to use my beautiful white paint, Farmhouse Paint Evolution Cosmic White, a beautiful white color. And here I go. I'm going to do two coats of this paint. After it dries for an hour or so, I'm going to scuff sand it lightly, wipe it down again. That's really important that you do that in between your finishes and in between your coats of paint and primer, but not the last coat. That way you'll get a really smooth finish. But I'm not gonna show you that second coat because that's pretty redundant. And here comes one of my most favorite parts, taking all the paper and the tape and the plastic off of my piece and getting to see if my plan comes together. So after letting it dry for a day or two, actually I was gone on a trip, so I let it dry for about five days, I decided I wanted to use these Peacock transfers um, it's called Retro Peacock from Prima Redesign, and I love this color. Um, all you do is you cut out the part, place it where you want it, and you're very careful before you take off the backing. Once you take off the backing, it is where it is. And I use little pieces of my frog tape to set that where I want it. And then I use the burnishing stick, which is nothing more than rubbing, 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 rubbing with this stick until it releases from the backing. When it's all released, I just use the edge of my sweatshirt and I smooth it down gently so that I don't rip up any little pieces. Here's my legs I'm putting on. I'm drilling the holes and then I am affixing the screws and attaching those legs. There is such a big amount of anticipation and nervousness and excitement when you get to that final step. Let's see how it turns out. So just a little reminder of how I started with this brown TV stand and now how it looks now. I am so excited. It's such a fun piece and a cool color and a modern contemporary design, and I love it. This piece sold in one day to a former customer. I couldn't be happier and neither could she. Ah, don't you just love it? This TV stand turned into something of a cabinet because it could be um, a bar or um, an LP and your stereo system on it or just to store things. I just love it. I love the vibe on it. That cosmic white is such a perfect white and the top, oh, love that too. So you can get the idea that I love a lot of that. So um, I would really appreciate it if you would subscribe to my channel and hit that bell button down there because when I have new video comes out co that come out, if you have that bell button push, then you'll get notified in your email that I have a new video. And I'd love for you to join me and watch that one too. So uh, thank you for being here. I appreciate you and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.